Hello everyone, Emmanuel here. Today we're going to talk about how to run uh, autoregressive distributed lag in R. So what are we going to be learning from this video? So first we're going to talk about what is lag, what is um, ARDL, what is short run, what is long run and their effects. When to use ARDL model and real life examples and finally we're going to talk about the assumption of the auto regressive distributed um, lag so what is lag so lag refers to a pass value of a variable used to explain the current value so we can better understand this from a real life example let's say today's inflation may be influenced by last month exchange rates and we can call that lag 2 or we can have another example where this month's crop yield could depend on rainfall two months ago so two months ago we can that will be lag 2 all right so what is an ARDL model so ARDL is is um, an acronym for auto regressive distributed lag and it combines past values, past values of um, the autoregressive and past or in current values of the distributed lag. It captures both short run and long run relationship. It is widely used in economics, policy and development research. So the short run versus the long run effect. So short run event, uh, effect um, focuses on the immediate or tempora temporary impact of a change in an independent variable. For example, a rise in interest rates may, may instantly slow customer spending. And the long run effect will be the persistence or permanent impact over time. Example, over time, high interest rates may reduce inflation and stabilize the economy. So ARDL helps estimate both effects in one model. So when do we use the ARDL model? So it is appropriate when we have a mixture of the level and the first difference. So if our variable are uh, in their level, they are stationary, or if first difference, they are stationary. So we can't use um, a, an ARDL model when we have difference in above the first difference. So you can only use it at their level or at false difference and also your sample size should be small moderate before we talk about using this model and if you want to analyze both short-term shocks and long-term trends the ARDL model will be a better fit also if you suspect a co-integration among your variables then the best choice will be the ARDL model all right, so the real case, um, the real life case scenario, for example, we have inflation in Nigeria. Okay, and um, part of the the, the various um, variables that can influence inflation might include, in our case, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be making use of um, exchange rate and interest rate. So the short term effect will be a sudden narrow devaluation could cause a sharp rise in inflation within a few months. So these are case scenarios where we can now start looking about applying the ARDL model. For the long effect, um, the case, the real life case would be if the exchange rate remains unstable, it could lead to persistent high inflation over time. So the ARDL can be used to quantify this, okay? All right, so the key assumptions of the ARDL model, one, no variable should be in the yeah, second difference. So we just have the level and the first difference alone. The model corrects lag lengths. Also, the residual are normally distributed and uncorrelated. Number four, the long run um, relationship that is co-integration exists and no perfect multi-collinearity uh, so if you have a perfect uh, multi-collinearity you're going to have a problem with your model 
All right, let's quickly go to R and see how we can um, have an example of how to run this in R. All right, so here I have, here is my R Studio. So um, we have various packages that would have to install before we can perform an ARDL test. And after which we're going to load them. Now let us import our data. So we're going to import our data with this line of code. My data is saved under my desktop. So you can edit this code and um, uh, place the part where your data is saved on your PC. So I'll just control enter this. If you can, if you look at the um, environment here, you see that it is saved. We're having four variables and uh, 780 obser um, observations. So quickly, we're going to convert this uh, data to time series. So we're going to use the as that year month using the zoo package. Okay. So quickly, we control enter this, and we're going to use our zoo package here to to convert our data to time series. Okay. So. We could view the structure of the data using this code, but for now, I'm just going to look at the few rules of my data. So here are the few rules of my data. You see, based on the conversion, our data set has been converted to months and year. And this, we here we have interest rates, exchange rates, and inflation rates. So we're going to see how um, interest rates and exchange rates influences inflation. All right, so. We can have a summary of this uh, data. So here we have the summary. We have the summary for interest, exchange rate, and inflation. We have the uh, minimum. We have the first quartile, median, mode, third quartile, maximum. We can have a much more robust uh, um, description using the um, the psych here package and the plier package. So when once it's load, we use this code to obtain that so you here we see we have a much more robust distribution here we are having the range we're having this queue we have the ketosis all right now so let's quickly go to the adf test under the ADF, adf test we're going to see whether our, our, our variables are stationary first at their level and uh, before we move to the first difference so let's do that so here we can see that um, interest rates with the p-value that p-value here 0 0.03781 is not significant and we say that it is not stationary at a level all right also the exchange rate is not the p-value here is not significant and it's not therefore we say it is not stationary at its level all right so don't worry about the warning it's just telling us that the p-value is smaller than what we are seeing so the p-value here is significant for inflation therefore we can say that um for this inflation um the inflation here is stationary at level all right so then we cannot apply a first difference to see whether so this should be a first difference to see whether the other two um, variables that are not significant at level would be significant at first difference so for interest rate, all right, so for interest rate is significant as the first difference and uh, for exchange rate, it is also significant as first difference. So having confirmed this, we can apply ARDL model. Remember we said part of the, the assumption is that um, the, um, the variables must either be stationary at the as their level or stationary at first difference so now let us apply the ardl model so we're going to use the auto ardl this is found in the ardl package in r so what this is going to do is it's going to select the best lag uh, for us using the criterion the a the a i c the i criterion and the by criterion all right so that is what this this is going to do so we get the, the inflation rate is a uh, dependent variable depending on um, these two um, variables the ex interest rate as well as the exchange uh, exchange rate so quickly let us run this 
all right so we are waiting while it runs all right so we can take a summary of um of our ardl model the one we just um, did okay so here we can look at the best um, order so from here you can see that the best lag for inflation is one lag one the best lag for interest rates is lag five and that's from uh, exchange rate is lag zero okay now so we would now move to do a bound test so this bound test here is going to help us to check whether there is co-integration and if there is co-integration that that is to say there is presence of long run so first of all we're going to use this code here and extract the best model from our, our ARDL model after which we're going to fit a bond F test here so this is the code we're going to use using the um, case 3 here All right, so this is our result for our bond F test. Here we can see that the F statistics here is greater than our, is greater than our upper critical bound, and also we can see that it's significant. So, since if our F, F statistics is greater, we can reject the null hypothesis and uh, conclude that there is co-integration. Okay, so having ascertained that there is co-integration, co we can now pro proceed to estimate the short run and long run effects using the error correction model. Alright, so this is the model here. Alright, so we run this model. Now we take the summary of the model. All right, so this is the output here. This is what we got. Here we can see the intercept. The intercept is 38.84 and is statistically significant. So what the interpretation for this is that the baseline change in inflation rate when all else is zero. So we can see here that is statistically significant. So then we move to the inflation rate. The inflation rate here, we can see that um, this inflation rate here is what we call the error correction term. Okay. And we can see here that it is um, negative and it is also significant. So that is um, what the result here is telling us. And what it means from this result here, what it means is that we are that um, about 99.8 percent of deviation from long run equilibrium is correct in one month that is what so here we're having lag one so that is what this is telling us so we go to the next one we have the interest rate here and we can see that um it is negative and slight and uh, not um, significant so this is not statistically significant what it means is that um, one unit increase of interest rates leads to a short-run decrease of about um, um, 0 0.14263. But then it is not significant. So we go to the exchange rate here. We see that the exchange rate is positive 0 0.165 and is statistically significant. So this means that a unit increase in exchange rate increases inflation in the short run by 0 .0, 0, 0.16532 so that is the interpretation for this output so to quickly get the the long run we can use this other code here to get the long run so the long run is simply the short run coefficient divided by the error correction term coefficient and there is a minus here so what we're trying to do here is to divide um, the short run coefficient which is minus 0 0.14263 uh, for interest rate divided by the error correction term which is minus 0 0.99841 and also for this 
0 0.16532 uh, divided by minus this. So when we do that, we would get the uh, long run. And now, so we just print it out. And this is the long run here. So when we do that, this is what we're going to have. All right, so what this means is that for the long run, um, one unit increase in interest rates in long run will result to a, a decrease of about 0 0.142849 for inflation. And for exchange rates, um, one unit increase here would result to about um, 0 0.1655839 increase or in inflation in the long run okay so we can interpret this for this one here for the interest this suggests that higher interest rates helps to reduce um, inflation over time and for the exchange rates we can say that a depreciation uh, through uh, inflation is passed okay so it's passed through exchange rates so that is the interpretation for that if you have any need for any further questions you can drop your question in the comment section and i will do well to reply as soon as possible thank you